This is our look back at the 2008 ABSA Off-Road Championship Series. Eight races, more than 4,000 kilometers of hard grinding rain, and six classes to be contested. We're off to round one of the national championship, the Nissan Dealer 400 in the Western Cape. Darling has, over the last five years, provided the season opener with a dry, hot, and dusty race that sets the tone for the seven remaining events in the ABSA Off-Road Championship. Nissan's defending national champ Duncan Foss was flying away up front, while Mark Renier and his navigator Chris Birkin kept the chopper pilot on his toes with some exceptional driving. The pair were newly crowned national rally champs in class and were trying to be quick, yet also conserve the Toyota. Mountaineer Ivar Tolvson and his British navigator Quinn Evans were climbing up the standings, backing up Foss and three-time champion Hannes Schrobler in their Nissan Navara. The multi-talented motorcycle legend Alfie Cox and his co-driver Henieter Stecher in the all-new Motorrad SP were also hoping to add to their already impressive list of achievements in 08. Bevan Bertolt and Robin Houghton were seventh in the SP class and going well. The research and development department at Toyota had been busy and it showed. Neil Woolridge and Kenny Schulthammer's Ford Ranger raised not just a few eyebrows by taking the fastest loop after hopping at an accident scene and raced into third place. But the dust throughout was debilitating and robbed teams of any and all visibility at times. But the Micro and Excel dealer team Toyota, father and son Hijo and Yap the Brain, soldiered on regardless. George and Sharon Barkhausen tested their marriage vows in car, but this time there was no need for that, as they debuted the Rogue Toyota Hilux in the SP class. Forward were trying to keep the top 10 blue and white. Gubis von Tonde and Rion Kopp and the Unifreight Ford Ranger took sixth, battling the billowing powdery dust all the way. The scene was set early on, not just for the Nissan Dealer 400, but also for the rest of the season in all six classes. And there was a lot of racing still to be done. In 07, Nissan won seven out of eight races, and the other manufacturers were all ready to topple them from their lofty perch. Meanwhile, Kutsiela Vaskakhni and Johan Gerber were setting the pace in Class D. And Team Barberspun's Yanni Fissa and Jorks Leroux have taken the lead in Class E in their Toyota. This was a battle that raged all season long and was one that intrigued scribes and fans alike. With second place Class E races, Thomas Rundle and Brian Roberts in the Bowden Tire Services Nissan Hardbody starting their year on just the right note. The class racing was exceptionally competitive, as it always is in the APSA Off-Road Championship. And campaigning for the first time in the SP class, the green and black landy of Harold and Tian Kun trundled into view to mark their debut. They took seventh. In Class D, the brothers of Matten, Henry and Maurice had battled to get their Obi Nissan going after the prologue, but they eventually did, and from here on in, they were very impressive. But Cliff Weichelt and Jimmy Goch in the N1 4x4 were earmarked to be their greatest competition for the year 2008. In Class E, Jack Beckham and Lotero Santoro in their 2.5-litre diesel Ford Ranger pulled third place. But back in Darling at the finish line, the Nissan celebrations were firing up. Duncan Foss clocked 4 hours and 44 minutes, leading the way home with a scant 36 seconds to spare. With Lovaskakhne and Gerber triumphant in Class D, and they Nissan by 13 minutes, and in E it was Frissa and Leroux, who had a four-minute gap over Rundle and Roberts. Foss had just picked up where he'd left off in 2007, and was pleased as punch. We had a perfect weekend. It started off on a good note on Thursday when we shook the cars down, and they felt really good. Um, and I, I thought we were going to be in for a good weekend after Thursday. But um, that's, it was perfect, you know. We didn't have a, one little bit of drama with the car. It ran perfectly. No funny noises, nothing. Rafi was great. And uh, Hannes made one mistake. I think he stalled his car on, a, on one of the turns and we passed him. And that's the name of the game these days. You cannot make a mistake. mistake. It's so competitive. The Eastern Cape 500 round two of the 2008 ABSA Off-Road Championship was a tough challenge. This route was totally different to any other the 60 drivers in the production car class and the specials had faced before. A substantial part of the event, reduced from 1,000 k's to 500 because of recent fuel price hikes, was to run in the Longmore Forest area in and around Port Elizabeth. Lots of blind rises and corners with drop-offs off camber corners and other surprises made up the route, consisting of two legs which covered 430 kilometers. Foss with standing driver Jan Louis Weichelt at his side was not having a smooth ride and battled electrical problems all the way through for a disappointing seventh place, possibly denting his championship chances. And as thought the production cars were quick on this route, it meant a slightly different approach and of course the resultant faster speeds. Ford's boys loved it out there. The SP Class 2 had grown and it stepped up the competitiveness. One mistake and it's two or three places gone.
And then, of course, in Alfie Cox's case, bodywork as well at the same time. And maybe that turning circle needed a little bit of work. Nissan were the defending manufacturer's trophy winners too, so Ford and Toyota were determined to put a stop to that. But the mid-round based squad would be tough to stop, if at all. Cronier clocked the fastest production time bar none on loop one, but surprise, surprise, next to a pier was the Ford of Woolridge and Schulthammer, with their stablemates Mark Ferguson and Craig West, and Corbus van Tonda and Rian Guapa also right there. Another new SB entry, the IDM cement outfit with Yonkou Swanepoel and Keith Solomon aboard also gave good reckoning of themselves, announcing their presence with a solid ninth. Class D and right here is where the Zamatans decided to take control of the 2008 season and just never relinquished it at all. Their OB Nissan was in full flow and also reliable. The Alberton based men never looked back again. Class D has always been an intriguing one, with as many as half a dozen drivers and teams who have a chance at winning every time. Cliff Weichelt and Jimmy Goch was one of those. With another team of relative newcomers, Christian Deploy and Henk Janse van Fuhren, announcing their seasonal intentions early on in the same class. Class E is a breeding ground for potential SP class races, but these almost stock same vehicles had a huge rate of attrition in the PE area, and all but one of them, Diervoort van Breda and Peter de Blissy, dropped out. Toyota's Bertolt and Houghton flipped their brand new Hilux and that was the end of the road for them here, but also signaled the replacement of Bevan as a works driver for the Japanese manufacturer. At the sharp end of the field though, it was a big moment for Toyota as Kronje and Birkin stormed to a comprehensive 10 minute win over the rest. Only 10 SPs made it to the line after the 500 Ks, but Woolridge and Schalthammer piled on the points with a second podium finish. In Class D, it was Brother Zermatten who only won by 25 seconds over Weichelt, while the Class E victory went to Von Breda and Duplessis. For a fluish Cronier, it was a long time coming after being so heartbreakingly close the previous season. I mean, we started this morning not knowing, you know, what the pace is going to be like. Um, we got stuck behind Gary for a little while. And uh, we just kept pushing, um, getting close to him. I mean, you can see what the front of my car looks like. It just roasted us with uh, these big rocks. And eventually we got past him and then we got into a rhythm and, and managed to pull a nice lead. And um, coming in, we weren't too sure if we had a, a big enough gap. We went out to the second loop. Um, the flu was taking its toll on me and uh, I just decided to take it a, take a fairly easier. I had to look through the switchbacks. Um, I couldn't see anybody, so I, I knew that I'd had a, a fair size lead and just brought it home. But the guys have done a great job. I mean, the car has just been so awesome this weekend. From there, the off-road circus pitched its tents in the sugarcane of Eston in KwaZulu-Natal. Entries in the SP class had risen to an all-time high of 13 in 08, and the big 4-litre production car list was headed up by the defending champions, Duncan Foss and Ralph Pitchford, who in the fire engine red Nissan Navara were obviously marked rather tightly due to their national champion status. In the Ford team's backyard, that would be exactly the same case, and then some. This was the third of eight races in the series, and this part of the season started becoming defining for teams, as the early teething problems should have been sorted by now, and the car, driver and navigator, as well as the mechanical combination, should have settled and started delivering results. The Nissan Sugar Belt 400 was crunch time for a lot of teams, Cronier included after picking up his first win of 08. Setting the pace at the top of the production car log, it was indeed Mark Cronier and Chris Birkin, while Foss and his co-pilot Ralph Pitchford were just two points back, just 16 points separated the top six, and that group included four former champions. Clearly the pressure was on. The Mekron XL dealer team Toyota and the skillful hands of Hegel and Jaap de Brain was another season stronger in the experience department, and it showed as they worked the route for all it was worth. Under leaden and rapidly darkening skies, all the SP vehicle participants were trying to find the fastest yet safest way around a route which was mushy and slippery at times and at others dusty and dry. Mark Ferguson and Craig West in the second Ford Ranger were jumping up the order and were on a roll when they really had one. Just into the corner with the weight on the wrong side of the car and over she goes. But luckily it didn't take them long to change the windscreen to a special class vehicles and they were back on terra firma and speeding along again. 
with Toyota's newcomer Anthony Taylor, multiple track champion in car with navigator Robin Houghton in the third Castrol Toyota Hilux feeling his way around. He finished eighth, first time out. The Bernie man has a fun track pedigree, but he was far away from any black top here, yet he was in control and racing quickly. But the sight of the stricken forward certainly got the Toyota lads thinking about keeping it on the straight and narrow at all times. Ivar Tollefsen and Stanley navigator Francois Jordan made a big push mid-race and had the Toyota and Ford camps looking over their shoulders. For them, the trick was to find the balance between sensible racing and preserving the Navara, which in effect is the watchword for good performances in off-road racing. Grenier thought to travel lightly would help, while Tollefsen and Jordan's foray into the top five ended with a flat. And proving our point of the competitiveness of the Formula car after car street by, each one relegating the Nissan Dio one more spot. As for the Barkhuizens, George and Sharon, their charge had become reliable and therefore their consistency had improved rapidly. The husband and wife team were starting to become good value for money. Moving to class D in Kutsia Labaskachni and Johan Gerber were ruling the roost. While the Zermattens and Weichelt with Koch could not get it to the line in one piece this time. That gave deploying Janssen van Vieren some valuable championship points in second. And ditto for Fissa and LaRue, who are running things up front in Class E, looking for their second win of the season. But they certainly weren't having it their own way. Peckham and Santoro were all over them like a rash and pushing hard. With only 12 minutes covering the top three again with things so tight, mistakes were out of the question. And predictably, there were none from Duncan Foss with Ralph Pitchford at the usual pinpoint accurate best. And a six-minute victory for the Nissan Navara crew, as well as a leap to the top of the championship standings. Problem Moore had several mechanical troubles and could not crack a top ten spot. There were two finishes in Class D with the Sonic team pulling up full house of points, while Toyota packed four into the top five in Class E with an eye towards the manufacturer's trophy. Woolridge, second again, confirmed the tight racing. Very close race. In the SP class, the way it is now, you can't you can't even blink and someone passes you. So it was very close racing. And um, I think we lost a little bit of time on the first loop this morning. Maybe I was a bit too tentative with it being wet. And with the new tyres, I wasn't 100% sure of them. And we, we kind of like lost that minute. And we were just never, we we're never able to make up that minute again. So um, kind of like kept the gap like at all most of the day. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. But it was a great event. The car was perfect and uh, no problems at all. We won't have any either because we're back after the break. Vehicle and asset finance from Absa. Going the extra mile to be brought to you by MTN. Vehicle and asset finance from Absa. Going off the beaten track to find solutions. <laughs> The Toyota Kalahari Botswana 1000 Desert Race, round four of the Absa Pro Championship, has always been a race that stretched vehicles, crews and drivers to the limit and then beyond. The desert certainly takes no prisoners, and in the Botswana capital, Gaborone, the organizers had set up a route which traversed some of the most varied terrain the drivers and navs had experienced in years. It was a grueling but fair test. Duncan Foss and Ralph Pitchford had notched up two wins already in 08, but they still had a six-point lead over the consistent forward pairing of Woolridge and Schulthammer, with Toyota's Grenier just a further two points back. And the manufacturer's race was also still wide open. Toyota had a nine-point lead over fellow Japanese giant Nissan, while Ford was 20 points in arrears. It shaped up to be a thrilling side contest, and it was. Up ahead for the teams was a 250k run to the first designated service point at Hatsala Cloudly, where there was a scheduled 15-minute decontrol, and then the ride home which would skirt the central Kalahari game reserve. The deep and very heavy desert sand had drivers fighting forearm and hand cramp, while navigators had to hold on for dear life. With time slipping away, the 51-year-old Nissan stalwart Hannes Hobler knew that he needed to turn his season around and the desert provided the perfect backdrop. He was going hell for leather. However, Hobler's unlucky season continued. This time, he and Moore had a 30-minute stop to repair a spring on the accelerator mechanism. Not ideal if you're trying to win a fourth championship. Taylor, in only his second major off-road race in the SP Toyota, had shown great improvement and had a superb drive right into fifth place with a delighted Robin Houghton right beside him.
Barkhausen's two showed good form and that their best ever finish in the desert in the Bloemfontein based Ruokon SP wasn't a fluke. Exactly the same could also be added behind the names of Yaku Swanepoel and Keith Solomon, who obviously love it when it gets really tough and really long, like 1,000 k's worth of long. And as Corbus van Tonde and Rian Gropa found out, the local transport can be cumbersome and slow to get moving sometimes. After a disappointing run in the cane fields of KwaZulu Natal, the Ryobi Nissan with Henry and Mauricio Matten on board was back to its best and making the running in Class D. With the Raisonic lads, Lavaskachni and Gerber a good 18 minutes in arrears. At the halfway point of the season, the Class D battle was wide open. And after a fine third place in the sands of Botswana, Duploy and Janse van Fieren would have fancied their chances too in their Toyota Hilux. In Class E, the very experienced Yanni Fissa and Jorks Leroux in the Castrol team Barberspong Toyota Hilux led the Toyota Challenge with Leroux, the reigning co-driver's champion, making a strong statement. The Kalahari bush is very dense and as a result, it's very penal. The sand is unforgiving and to top that, the ambient temperature was rising steadily too. Throw in the massive distance and it's clear why this event is always a true race of attrition. Some of the wider country roads are speed friendly, but then one has to keep in mind that it's a long way to go, so you have to save the car. It was tough out there, so tough that less than 70% of the field saw the finish line of day two in one piece, a typically tough desert race in uncompromising conditions. No surprises after all those miles, it was Duncan Foss and standing Louis Weichert in a flying Sassel Nissan Navara. A third victory in four races, and this one too added another vital 25 points to an already impressive championship tally. Krobler stormed through the field to take fourth. In Class D, the Zermattens took the win and big points in the national championship, while Fiss and Leroux had a 20-minute gap over Van Breda and De Toy in Class E. first two days, we, we battled a little bit. I battled a bit in the time trial. And yesterday, I battled. But we, you know, we kept our heads together. We knew we were slightly off the pace yesterday, but I, I knew overnight we could do some improvements to the car. And, 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 and I was confident that we, we, we could do well today. And uh, we improved the car and uh, we had a really, really good day today. At the halfway mark, and Foss with a slender but vital 16-point lead. The consistent Ford Dio were also keeping an eye on Cronier and another on Krobler. And the points battle in Class D only had the Raisonics team ahead by eight, with Fissa and Leroux enjoying an 18-point margin over Peckham and Santoro. Very little breathing space anywhere. To the city in the sun and situation.